You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, Kate the Great. Catherine, Princess of Wales, has been described as such in a recent issue of Grazia magazine, labelling her Kate the Great. Hilariously, many of the sugars regularly accuse the Princess of Wales of copying Harry's wife when it's the other way around. How do we know that? Two simple factors. The first is chronologically, many of the things that the Princess of Wales has done, Harry's wife then does thereafter. Secondly, you, as a consequence of access to my work, know that Harry's wife is a narcissist, has no sense of a true self. What she portrays to the world, governed by her narcissism and done so subconsciously, is an amalgam of the pieces of other individuals. This is character trait acquisition. Bonded together by the fuel that she must receive, her narcissism creates this construct made of shards, pieces, fragments, all bolted together so that it is outward facing for the purposes of asserting control over people and drawing fuel. Some narcissists do have talent. She does not. Her narcissism relies on her, in effect, purloining from other people their experiences, their thoughts, their observations, their comments, their quotations, and passing them off as her own or regurgitating them in a similar way. You only saw yesterday, in the empty and boring video analysis, that even when she was asked a simple question, she couldn't answer it, went into a word salad, and just demonstrated that not only is she not particularly intelligent, she can only just talk about herself again and again and again, rather than provide anybody with any meaningful insight. It is a constant thorn in the side of Harry's wife that Catherine, Princess of Wales, exists. She is, as I've explained to you, the nemesis, because she holds a position that Harry's wife believes should be hers. She holds a position that she believes is one that she should be in, that she should be married to Prince William and that she should become the queen, that she will be married to an heir to the throne rather than no ginger bollocks. She doesn't give two figs about ginger bollocks. He's just a mean to getting where she needs to be. And he's largely served his purposes, hence devaluation isn't too far away for him. But for Harry's wife, everything that she wants to be, believes that she is. She's repeatedly defeated by the good offices of Catherine. This isn't a deliberate act on the part of the Princess of Wales because she isn't a malicious individual. Make no mistake that if appropriately pushed, then... Even Catherine's narcissistic traits would come to the fore. But, expertly advised, she's adopted an approach of not reacting to and ignoring Harry's wife, particularly after the nasty way that Harry's wife has behaved towards her and her children. The Sugars will continue, of course, to make up accusations about her, driven by their own inadequacies and envy of her. Driven by their misguided belief that Harry's wife is the true princess of the world that ought to be supported. But the fact remains that for Harry's wife, she attempts to be a philanthropist, only to be outgunned by the good offices of Princess of Wales, demonstrating that she's undertaken philanthropy with ease, without having to shout about it, having it reported, but without having to thrust it in people's faces, time and time again. Harry's wife's attempted to demonstrate that she has some skill as a writer. But she hasn't. The bench of stench was laughable. And instead, of course, we got the extracts of Harry's wife's diary, which appeared in Finding Freedom, and also, of course, her paw prints all over spare. Princess of Wales has a natural talent in taking photographs, and each time she publishes them, particularly of her children, that really gets to Harry's wife as a further reminder of the capabilities of the Princess of Wales and a reminder that she's falling behind. Harry's wife believes that she has the common touch, that she's one of the people, that people love her. Admittedly, there are some clowns that do, but most people find her boring, dull and downright unpleasant. Many people gave her a warm welcome 
and it was only after her behaviours became more and more obvious that they decided they didn't like her any longer. With Catherine, she has a natural ability when dealing with people. It can be seen in the way that she engages with people at walkabouts, when she attends the opening of a factory, or where she's lending her support to some mental health initiative. Her empathic warmth radiates from her. People want to talk to her. They feel at ease in her presence. With Harry's wife, she is envious of that ability. She believes that she has it herself, but she does not. She isn't really interested in anybody other than herself, and any interactions with people are just part of her ongoing manipulations, although she, of course, doesn't realise this. Harry's wife also would love to be seen as an influencer once again, and somebody that is a fashion icon. Yet, not only with Catherine appearing on the cover of Grazia, not looking like some kind of crazed fembot, as Harry's wife did on the cover of Cut, not looking like she just had her hair done by her husband, as she did on the cover of Time, but a natural radiant photograph, which again would cause Harry's wife to gnash and wail and grind her teeth. But it's the fact that Grazia has made reference to Catherine as being a fashion influencer, saying that she's worth a reported £1 billion. The Kate effect is a well-documented phenomenon of the modern age, but what you might not have realised is just how much it's worth to the United Kingdom's fashion industry. According to an article published in Newsweek, it's something to the tune of £1 billion. Every time Catherine wears something, a gilet, a pair of jeans, a ball gown, searches spike on Google Trends. The Bond girl moment at last year's premiere of No Time to Die, when she arrived wearing a gold sequined gown from Jenny Packham, wow, said Ginger Bollocks, immediately had shoppers on the hop. There was an 809% increase week on week for gold sequin dress searches immediately afterwards. Betway has done further research into which of her looks have proved more popular on Pinterest, a good way to gauge public interest, and outfits from homegrown brands are among the most popular. The pale pink dress she wore to last year's Wimbledon, a cinch waist from Bayula, London, clocked up 3,005 pins. Another dress, this time a white number from Susanna, which she's worn several times over the past few years for public duties, got 2,943 pins. Catherine's brand loyalty is also famous. She's the ultimate repeat wearer, which is an extra boost for labels that are staples of her repertoire, such as Catherine Walker, Amelia Wickstead, Pula London, Susanna, and Eponine. Once again, Kate the Great defeats Harry's wife with regard to being a not only a fashion icon, but also influencing purchases to the same extent. Despite the best attempts of people.com and hello to tell people you too can look like a bag lady like Harry's wife and you also can look like an escaped Jawa and you can also look like Chairman Mao visiting New York. She really doesn't have the same effect and this will really get to her. Everything about the Princess of Wales frustrates, irritates, annoys and causes huge envy from Harry's wife. She occupies the position she wants, people love her, she's graceful, fun, entertaining, and she does so all of these things effortlessly. Of course, she's not had an easy ride with regard to her own assimilation into the royal family, something that Harry's wife seemed to have forgotten. The fact is that many of the pelters that are thrown by the sugars are simply born out of the same level of envy that Harry's wife has. And, as Catherine continues to do what she does best, all that Harry's wife will do is sit, mired in her own malcontent, because she cannot stand to see the contentment, as no narcissist can, of somebody else, and particularly not the nemesis. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.